Today, I'm gonna go for the Galaxy Z Flip 3 versus the iPhone 13 Pro. Let's do a quick microphone test. Testing one, two, one, two. This is how it sounds like on the Z Flip 3. Testing one, two, one, two. This is how it sounds like on the iPhone 13 Pro. Today, I'm going back to Boston for the weekend. So right now, I'm heading to New York City, grab some food, and bring something back to Boston. So basically, in this video, you're gonna see a lot of hanging out, chilling, eating, and just going into the city, train rides and all that stuff. So it's, I'm just trying to show how these cameras will perform in the everyday life. Alright, so the Z Flip 3 doesn't have a telephoto lens, but I'm still going to zoom in and try to match it up as best as I can so you guys can see the difference and you guys can also decide if it's worth having a telephoto lens at all. Let's go over to cinematic slash video portrait mode on the Android. Although the Android phones do have this a while ago, which I never really touched. So I don't really see a lot of people using this mode either on the iPhone or Android. But if I had to pick one, I would pick the cinematic mode on iPhone just because it does work with other things, not just the face. Because on Android, it's always looking for a face and that's the only way for it to work. On the iPhone, the cinematic mode does have this wrap focus feature which basically when I'm focused and if I look away, it's gonna focus on something else. But for me, in my opinion, I would be in video mode trying to get close up as close as I can so I can get that natural focus blur. But since the iPhone does have this automatic macro feature now, it's kind of hard for me to do because it auto switches to another or to the ultra wide angle lens, which doesn't offer that much of that background blur. I don't know when it's gonna switch or how close I need to be. And I would always have to like have that in the back of my head. So for me, what I found out is if I want to go back quickly, since there's no manual way to do it, is that I would switch to ultra wide angle lens, back up a bit, and then go back to the main lens and it would switch that way. You can still see the cut in between or transition in between, but if, you're, if you switch to the ultra wide angle lens and still be up close, it's not going to change. So you got to back up for that to register for the, for the change, but that's the only way I found out how to quickly switch back to the main camera. I hope Apple just added a manual switch to this. If you're like a casual person, you probably don't care too much about it. But if you're like me who likes the video, who likes to see the background blur when you're up close to things, definitely just having that automatic switch just will ruin your shot.
Now for the cameras and how you use them every day, the iPhone 13 Pro is pretty much like any other phone out there. Since the Z Flip 3 can fold and bend, basically you can angle it a little bit and it can stand on its own, whether in portrait or video uh, landscape mode. And you can just get like a quick vlogging shot. On top of that, you do get like a front screen, which really helps you see yourself when you're vlogging and you can see the timer or how long the clip is. With the iPhone, if you want to vlog yourself, definitely you need to carry around a tripod, which will take some time to set up and then break down. So with the flip, you can just easily get it, bend it a little bit, stand it up and you're good to go. I don't want to make this video too long so all the photos I took goes up on Instagram and I usually do it as like a blind comparison test and I'll review everything on the next day. So if you haven't yet you can follow me there and participate in that. But let me know what you guys think about these two phones and how they compare. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.